I've had a lot of people commenting on the previous videos, particularly the last two or three, uh, asking is it better than the troop carrier, and some saying it's not as good as the troop carrier, which was a bit strange. I mean, how do you know? I don't know. But um, the, the jury is out. I imagine that some things it's going to be better and other things it's going to be not as good. Is it better than the troopy? Um, ask me that in a couple of days. On our trip through the Pilbara, Gunn and I often discussed the merits of our new camper conversion and made comparisons with the troop carrier. We recorded many of those thoughts along the route. Here are some of our conclusions. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and travelling to the remotest parts of the world. The aspects of it that I'm really loving, the other aspects of it that uh, are not as intuitive as the troopy was. This is much more of a beast in the sense that you've got to slap her around a bit, you know, you've got to manhandle her <laughs> in a sense because um, so much bigger and what have you. The troopy was, was very simple to use, um, very light touch. The troop carrier was pretty perfect. There were so few things that I had to tweak. I did tweak some things, but there were so few things. Because actually my troop carrier, the one that I built in Australia, was actually my second troop carrier. And the first troop carrier built in South Africa, and I was able to make some reasonably, well, I'd say major changes to the interior layout to make it work. Moved the fridge to the other side, the storage changed, lots of things changed. What's happened here is, it is the same. This is my first troopy. It's my first camper. And the fact that we have to swap things around and change things around is to me very positive. Because you, how do you get it right the first time round? We would have been enormously lucky to have got it right. Um, the thing though is, I think that the changes we can make to this are not complicated. It's not like we have to start a start and buy another troop carrier, another camper to give this another go. So Mark 1 and Mark 2 will be perfect. Having driven over 4,000 kilometers and have now spent nine nights camping with the stretched 79 Aussie Dream Tourer Camper, I am able to, I think, be able to present to you the pros and cons over the troop carrier. Let's start with driving. Its driving manners are remarkably similar to the troop carrier. Those of you who have driven the 79 series, 76 series and, and 78 troop carrier will know that they are all similar, but they do have some differences in that the different wheelbases affect the ride and affect the directional stability. The directional stability of this with its extra long wheelbase is better than the troop carrier. It has a better straight line stability. Remember I have corrected the rear axle, made the rear axle wider, which improves directional stability in all of these vehicles. And the rollover cornering, turning. Remember, troop carriers are quite top heavy. They tend to lean a lot. There's no difference here. The most obvious difference though is maneuverability, here demonstrated with turning radius comparison. A U-turn takes approximately one traffic lane more with the stretched 79. Ride on corrugations on this is actually remarkably good as well. And I managed to, with my troop carrier, get that ride good. 
using BP51 shock absorbers and Ullman Emu springing. This has Terrain Tamer springing and the Terrain Tamer Pro shocks. And the ride on this I'm very happy with. I think on a very, very rough roads, the troop carrier has an edge, I think, but I haven't driven it over extremely rough. Well, I've done a few, but my, my inkling says that the troopy is a little bit better. And I think it's got to do with weight. My troop carrier top, topped out at 3,330 kilograms fully loaded. With this fully loaded, I'm sitting at 3,900. So you're talking 600 plus additional kilograms to lug this lot around. You're gonna pay for that. And that's gonna be mostly fuel consumption. From what I can see, I am using a good between two and three extra liters every 100 kilometers. That to me is significant. What's gonna be better off-road? The troop is. there's no question about it. It has a shorter wheelbase. It has a better breakover angle. angle. So the breakover angle with that vehicle is not terrible, but it's not particularly good either. But the real question is, is it good enough for my purposes? This remains a question that I need answered for myself. I have uh, with me a um, nicely equipped uh, Hilux, very nicely equipped uh, Nissan Triton. Uh, the other is Mitsubishi little SUV. And... Um, oh, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> I guess that if um, I can keep up with him, then... Hey. Uh, I'm going to use a different line. All right, I've been in two-wheel drive because I've been needing to make very tight turns and uh, now I'm in four. I want to go into four low. <coughs> Seconds, I've got some control. This exercise taught me that the vehicle is good off-road. Traction is excellent, ride on undulations excellent. After all, it's a land cruiser. Its shortcomings will be similar to the troop carriers, in that it is tall, wide, much wider than the troop carrier, and its reduced turning radius is going to make it a challenge on very twisty terrain. But its disadvantage off-road without question is going to be load distribution. Much more weight on the rear axle means that on soft ground it's going to be at a disadvantage. Again, how much of a disadvantage? On the channel the first time I took this vehicle off-road I got stuck in soft sand. And a lot of people said, oh it's absolutely terrible off-road. No it isn't, that's nonsense. Getting stuck is part of off-roading. I got out extremely easily. I'm learning this new vehicle and arriving at conclusions as I am experiencing it. Is it as good off-road as the troop carrier? No. Is its off-road performance unacceptable? Not even close. The more I drive it off-road, the better it becomes off-road because I'm learning it. Its off-road performance is more than adequate as a long-distance overland remote tourer. Now I wonder, the other day I got um, stuck in a riverbed and um, I'm sure I'll get lots of criticism saying, oh, you should have let down your tires before crossing the riverbed. Yes, I, you're absolutely right. But see, I'm not clairvoyant. I can't look at a surface and know immediately if it's going to... I almost got through. I w w almost got through. But you're right. You should let your tires down first. Yes, yada, 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 yada. But what happened there was that I got uh, stuck and I stopped. And I knew. 
I have enough experience to say, stop. Right now, you can get out of this. Little bit of digging. Two minutes of digging and you're out of it. Because I didn't spin my wheels and get myself in. But the thing that was running through my mind the whole time was, would the troopy have got through? With the reduced weight, would it have got through? And my gut says, no. It would have been the same. Almost exactly the same if I had been fully loaded in the troop carrier. If there was a difference, it's small. It's not a significant difference in that kind of terrain. The moment I take it on to dunes where I'm cresting dunes, yes, the troop carrier will no doubt have an advantage because it's got a better breakover angle. Because of course, remember, I built this as an overland tourer. That was its primary objective. Now, when I built the troop carrier, I built it as an overland tourer. Almost exactly the same approach I had with this, but for one major thing. And that was to do something about the troop carrier's lack of versatility. See, the troop carrier being a van, it, you've got a big open space in the back in, in which to put stuff, carry stuff. The moment you turn it into a dedicated overland tourer, you're using up all of that space with a bench to store stuff, your battery systems, packing stuff for food, the bed, all of the bits and pieces that make it an overland tourer. Unless you've decided, you know, developed some cunning way, which I hadn't, of making that stuff interchangeable or removable, easily removable, then you've turned a useful load carrying van into an overland tourer. It is then an overland tourer. And that is obviously not what I've done here. And here is where I see the biggest and without question the most significant advantage over building a ute over a van. I used to use my troop carrier as my daily driver together with our other car. So it wasn't used a lot and I didn't commute with it, but it wasn't too long, too cumbersome, it had a reasonable turning radius. The visibility around the vehicle was good enough for me to be able to use it around town. This, with its camper on the back, isn't. Visibility out the back around the sides is poor. Of course, it's very high and the turning radius when compared to the 79, the 79 turning radius is poor anyway, but manageable. This is poor and barely manageable. The length of these two vehicles is deceptive. When you look at the troop carrier, it looks a lot more compact and much, much shorter than the camper. But actually, it isn't. The length, you're talking this much longer. That's all. What makes this look very big and very bulky, and in fact it gives it the impression that it is very, very heavy, is this here, which is just shell. It's an egg shell to allow easier access. So the impressions, uh, you can't always trust them. With the trip carrier, it being converted into an overlander, if I wanted to go and put something in the back, carry something, it was hopeless. It was, it was useless. It had no space in the back. Where this is that I can remove the camper and I now have a ute. Yes, I have a ute with a poor turning radius. But when the ute, this is off, my visibility is very good. I look out the back, visibility is perfectly acceptable. Or the only thing that I've lost is some turning radius. The overall length of the vehicle compared to a standard 79, here is 90 millimeters longer, only that much longer. Because I have moved the wheel back, I haven't moved this back. This has stayed where it is. In fact, that's only 90 millimeter longer than the standard. So my departure angle is improved, but the vehicle's overall length only by this much, which is really nothing. So what I have gained is a vehicle that I can use for many, many tasks at the expense 
of turning radius. Another advantage I thought of with uh, this over the troop carrier, everything in the troop carrier was had to find its own place and be strapped down. Anything loose, you would hear it moving around in the back. So you could have nothing loose over a road like this. Whereas in the camper, you know, we basically just thrown those little steps in, the chairs are chucked in. They can't go anywhere, but they will be moving around right now. We can't hear them. No, nope, can't hear you. Imagine all the little rattles that are driving me absolutely up the wall. Is he going on right now in there, rattling away? Go for it. I can't hear you. Like a padded cell at the back there. It is, and I did manage the troop carrier to um, remove all of that. It was a bit of an effort, but uh, I, I can't stand rattles, and I managed to get it a rattle-free vehicle. Um, but it's an advantage. I don't have to pay too much attention to all of those final details when doing my packing. But you know what's so nice about this? Yeah. Normally when you arrive at a campsite, you, you're kind of thinking, oh shoot, you know, I've got to get my bed sorted out before I do anything because you don't want to be foraging around in the dark and you don't have to here. There's a couple no. of, and even the bed is made. Yes. You know, the pillows are it's in It's even place. less work than there was in the troopy. A troopy yeah. you had to do a little more work, well, with the pillows, but not much. Yeah. And the kitchen is... Our food access is, our, is the big, big thing at the issue moment, at the we, moment. But it's we're not, sorting that. It's not, we will sort it. One of the things that I really like about the camper compared to the troopy is the, the canvas backing, because it's not a, a, a flip up, the, you've got the canvas backing and it's like a headboard. So in the evenings, um, if we don't have a fire, because in Australia you can't always have a fire, uh, bushfires are a real pro you know bushfires as in the whole country burns down are a real problem so if the wind is really bad we don't make a fire and it's not much fun sitting outside without a fire so we'll come up here and we'll read or watch a movie and it's really nice because we can sit back in bed as if it is a bed which has really been very very nice as compared to any other rooftop tent that I've slept in. And while I'm complaining about arms and legs and all of that, I have to say I suffer terribly from claustrophobia. And I've had instances in rooftop tents where in the middle of the night I had to break out. I was ready to just tear the canvas apart. And Andrew heard the panic in my voice. He did not argue when I said, I am getting out of here. And we, you know, we've ended up pitching ground tents and what have you. Not a moment's thought about claustrophobia in here. Got all the space around you. So for me, this has been a godsend. Because even sometimes in the troop carrier, I just get that tightness in my chest. So this has been perfect. So compared to the troop carrier, the bed here is uh, it's far more airy than the troop carrier where it's lifting up like that. Although the length is a little bit shorter, the width feel it feels a bit wider and it feels much higher. It feels it's just a nicer place to sleep. But now the big advantage is here if somebody is in bed, somebody can still be down working in the camper and have space to move around as well with a troop carrier once the bed's down there is no space left in the back of the troop carrier to for anybody to do anything there's some things that i absolutely love about this vehicle that the, the troopy just didn't come close with and that is the fact that this is a double cab i know some people think we were nuts to buy a double cab and then immediately take out the seats what's the point of that oh for people, space hogs, you know, who need space for stuff, it's been fantastic. I love this space. I don't know if we can get in here now because the door, but uh, I've got all this space and all the dirty washing is there and I keep my laptop there and the bug out bag is there and it, it's there, you don't need it 
out the way, it's not in the tent. The troopy never had anything like that. So you were kind of tripping over that stuff really in um, the troopy. So this was genius. And if we can ever take um, my dog, Bella, with us um, on a trip, probably down to Esperance or something like that, uh, her car seat would fit in there perfectly. So just love it. Something that is, oh, I love, I seem to love a lot of things, but I really love are the drawers for clothes. I'd hoped that in the true, I suppose we could have turned some of the drawers in the troopy into um, drawers for clothes, but there was limited storage space in the troopy. So that wouldn't really work because you were using that for food and for, for other things. But I, I'm really enjoying having um, a, a drawer and for clothes. How did you carry clothes in the troopy? In a bag. And the trouble with the bag is you were always moving the bag out the way because you had that narrow um, center, little, uh, center walkway in the troopy. So if there were two of you and you both had a bag, you were kind of having to move that stuff around quite a bit. I think when it's all said and done, I'm actually preferring this vehicle more than the troopy. I know Andrew wants me to be very balanced and um, yeah, but I like the gull wings. I like this access. Um, okay, things that I don't like. The vehicle is so big. It is, I mean, it's colossal. In a parking lot or, there's no way, the trooper you could use as a daily driver, which was really quite nice. You know, could just nip down somewhere in the troopy. You're not nipping anywhere in this thing. Um, that so that with the camper on it makes it pretty much this is what it is. Another thing I preferred on the troop carrier is the, sh the location of the shower because um, you had the inter gull wing, internal gull wing, a shelf which was actually the fridge, and it was easier to access. I'd put my towel there, soaps and things like that. It was just easier. This is a bit fumbly, fiddly in terms of the shower. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to get something to hang on here to sort out that problem. It's a small problem, but it's, it, it's there. The other thing is that the Max Tracks. The Max Tracks um, on the troop carrier, I used that, the quick pitch Max Tracks side bracket that would flop down to be a table. So that instant table was in you know, ultra fast, which was really nice. And accessing the the Max Tracks up there is fiddly, again fiddly when compared to the Max Tracks table mounted to the side of the troop carrier. Not a big thing, but it is something. On reflection, really, I say it's too big and it's a handful and all of that, but everything I love about it, the size, the space, the ease of use, the accessibility, all of those things are a product of that space and size and blah, blah, blah. so what I'm saying really doesn't make sense, I guess, um, because you can't have one without the other. So if there was a way we could make it into a TARDIS, that it was small to start, or like one of those Harry Potter tents, you know, it looks like nothing from the outside. Hermione's beaded bag. That's your next project, Andrew. Some people have asked, why didn't I just go uh, Earth Cruiser route, based on an Evico Daily or the Fuso, or you know, there's, there's five ton payload trucks and I could have all the comforts. Well, I'm not ready to go that size because of the limitations of size. What I try to do here is to jump size wise one up from troop carrier because if you think about it, we start with small station wagons. Uh, then we go to slightly larger station wagons, and that levels off at the Land Cruiser 200. 
the you know Nissan Patrol make a big one there are not many left and then we go on to utes and we put something on the back of a ute like a canopy uh, with a rooftop tent or something like that and then the next stage is a large ute with a camper which is what I've done here beyond that it's the considerably bigger there's a big jump I was not and I'm still not prepared to jump that high and the reason is that while comfort is important to me it's not necessarily a priority for me for Gwyn and I I think the priority is being mobile and being able to uh, shoot lots of pictures and take lots of videos and go where we want without the limitations of a very large vehicle and this is bigger than the troop carrier which sits between ute and 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 ute, ute and camper you know it's a van so it really is like a large station wagon i think this is a fantastic compromise before going really big for us it's not about the camping it's about the destination and a lot of the places that we would want to go to, you can't take a big vehicle like that. You're very restricted. You, you, you are far more limited in taking a really big vehicle. Imagine trying to do that through some of the parks in Africa. They won't even let you in. They won't let big vehicles in. Um, but that's not really the, a problem in Australia and North America as much as it is in Africa. I don't think the comfort is such a high priority for us no. but it is important that's otherwise we would have just stuck with the troop carrier because it's perfect but we wanted more comfort than the troop carrier yeah and the payment the pay the and and other people have suggested you know why don't you just tow a no tow a caravan and <laughs> can you imagine no, that, I'd, I'd rather give up i'd rather give up the will to live than <laughs> Not See, quite. this is why we get on well. Um, th 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 then, if you're taking a caravan, then it's either children are the priority and they've got to be super, super comfort, comfortable and therefore comfort is the priority. Because children do bear, pay a big part in this. Yes, they do. Okay, but we've travelled with our kids in a station wagon with a rooftop tent and a ground tent and they have absolutely loved it. We haven't need to pull a, a trailer of any kind, but the demands of family mean for many, many people, I need a daily driver and I need a, a camping a, a solution to a, to a trailer. So I understand the need for that. The, the, yeah, it's that compromise. And, and for, for some, for probably a lot of people, it's the, the compromise of if I don't provide my family with enough comfort, they won't come with me. So, yes, I think so. That's... And I think what we've tried to do here is still keep the overlanding dream alive, but providing enough of those basic comforts that. Yes. And the, od and the overlanding dream that you speak of is exactly what we've yes. done on this trip. We found we have not followed the routes that, that, that we're alone. We haven't been to a single tourist site. Not one I'm yet. sure they're beautiful. And we will be seeing them when we get to the coast. We will be seeing some grey nomads and some camper trailers and, and that's absolutely fine. But this allows us to do more which is this and I mm. prefer this having not seen my troop carrier for a year my when I first saw it my heart leapt and then I parked my new one next to it and I have to be honest I'm not in love with my new vehicle I like it it's fun it's great yes but it's not a love affair. And that's a problem. Yeah. And that's because the main trouble is, 
It just doesn't look as good as the trophy. And that I can do nothing about.